Volume and surface area of solids with non-uniform cross sections. In this video, we will focus on spheres. You will find this on page 5 to 6 in the Namibia Ordinary Level Mathematics Textbook Y equals MX plus C to success. Volume and surface area of solids with non-uniform cross sections. In grade 9 or in junior secondary, we were looking at the ones with uniform cross sections. The shape does not stay the same. The first, the middle and the last slice do not have the same shape or area. So imagine if you are slicing it up, this one will not be as big as this one. This one will not be as big as this one. This one will not be as big as this one. So this is spheres, pyramids and cones. But in this video, we are just going to focus on spheres. A sphere is a solid that is perfectly symmetrical. All points on the surface area are the same distance R from the center. It has no edges or vertices, corners. It has one surface, not a face as it isn't flat. So it's just around. It's almost like a ball, a tennis ball. So the, the first part we are going to look at is the volume of a sphere. Of all the shapes, a sphere has the smallest surface area for a volume, therefore it can contain the greatest volume for a fixed surface area. So the formula for that will be 4 over 3 pi r to the power of 3. Okay, let's look at an example. A ball bearing which is Spheretical in shape has a radius of 0, 0,3 centimeters. Find the volume of the ball bearing. So first, just write down the volume, use your formula and just substitute. Use pi, the one on the calculator. Then I just remember this is to the power 3, so it's 4 over 3 multiply pi, multiply 0 0.3 to the power of 3, or you must say, 0 0.3 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.3 and correct to three significant figures this will be your answer okay let's look at the next one the mass of 5,000 identical ball bearings if they are made of steel of density and they give you so just take this answer and multiply it with the 5,000 but and multiply also with how heavy it is. There's the density, or the density rather. So it's 7.85. And then correct to the nearest um, three significant figures, it will be 4440 gram. Okay. I want you to stop the video, and I want you to do try now 39, just number one. You can continue the video as soon as you are finished. Okay, a spherical soap bubble has a radius of 2,5 centimeters. Find the volume of the air inside the bubble. It's just the most important, usually they will give you the formulas, but it's also good to just memorize it because it's not so difficult. So what will it be? Volume, it's four over three pi r to the power of 3. So it's 4 over 3 and um, leave your pi and what is the radius? 2.4 and that's to the power of 3. And if you press it on the calculator and correct it or simplify it is to five, three significant figures it will be 57.9 centimeters square straight forward okay let's look at the practical one a hollow crystal ball has an external radius of five centimeters and the thickness of this crystal is one centimeter is that that okay find the volume of the crystal used to make this ball so remember there's nothing inside there is the crystal 
So I'm first going to work out the volume of the big circle or sphere and then I'm going to work out the volume of the small one and I'm just going to subtract and then I will come to the shaded part. And that's just exactly what I was doing. You can press that or you can take that 4 over 3 pi out as a common factor. First get this, then multiply it, but correct the three significant figures, that will be your answer. Okay. Okay, I want you to stop the video and I want you to do try now 40. You can continue the video as soon as it's finished. So a watermelon is in the shape of a sphere of radius 13 centimeters. It is skin is one centimeter thick. Find the volume of the skin of the watermelon. So it's actually exactly the same. Now my circle will not be so nice, but I'm just going to try. This is now the skin. Okay, so the radius, okay, let's just see, watermelon of the, of the sphere in radius, this is 13. Okay, its skin is one. So meaning that that inside will be 12. Okay, and now I do exactly the same as in the previous example. To find that volume, I'm just going to say it's 4 over 3 pi, and it's 13 to the power of 3, don't forget. And then 4 over 3 pi, and it's 12 to the power of 3. Now you can take it out just as a common factor, maybe to make the calculation a little bit easier. So then it will be that 13 to the power of 3 minus 12 to the power of 3. And then my final answer, correct the three significant, I first got 1964.542606, but correct the three significant figures. I get 1960, and that will be in cubic centimeters. Okay, let's look at the next one. A basket ball has a volume of this. Find its radius. Now it's just working, manipulating the formula. So again, start with the formula, substitute now the volume, and you must find the radius. So don't forget, first divide by that, and then what is the reverse of cube? Cube root. And then I get my answer. Okay. I want you, again, I think I will do number two. Stop the video and you can just do number two. Again, you can continue the video as soon as you are finished. Okay. A spherical stone has a volume of, and now they give you a pi. Find the radius of the stone. Okay, now if they usually give you in terms of pi, it's best, best to let the pi's just cancel out. So again, start with the volume, because there's volume, you see, volume. So the volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r to the power of 3. So the volume is 36 pi equals 4 over 3 pi and that's going to be to the power of 3. Now the best will first be to divide 4 over 3 pi and to divide 4 over 3 pi. Can you see what's happening now? The pi's will just cancel out. Okay. And then I'm just going to quickly find that. Then I'm just taking that cube root. Okay, and then my final answer will be that of, because remember, can I show you, it's not necessary to write it, I want to write it better. 
Make it a multiply. It's going to be better, working better. So make it 36 over 1 and multiply by the reciprocal. Okay. And if you do that, you, that is going in 1, that's going in 9, and 9 times 3 will be, and don't forget, okay, I want it now to do that. Yes, I must take this away because I'm already taking the cube root there. So that will be the cube the root of 27. So therefore, R will be equal to 3 centimeters. And that's the final. Okay, I just want to us to go to, now this was volume, and now I want us to go to surface area. I just want to use this. I have to go to this part. And I just want to make it bigger. Okay, so we can continue. Okay, so in this video, oh, it's still in this video because we are at spheres. I want now to look at the surface area, not the volume of a sphere. The diagram shows a sphere in a rectangular piece of paper as shown below. If the sphere has a radius of R and the breadth of the length of the rectangle piece of paper are equal to the diameter and circumference of the sphere, respectively, then the paper will just cover the entire sphere. Then the surface area of this will be the area of the paper, which is length times breadth, which is the circumference, because if I'm rolling it there, multiply the diameter. That will give me 2 pi r, that's the circumference of the circle, multiply, the diameter is 2 r, and there I derived at the formula for the surface area of a sphere. So, a sphere. This is going to be 4 pi r squared. There is the formula. Now let's just start with an example. A table tennis ball has a diameter of 4 centimeters. Find its surface area. So again, the radius, the radius is half, so that's 2, because I'm working with the radius there, so I have to first get the radius. And then I basically just do substitution, and I get my answer. Again, I want you to stop the video, and I want you to do number two. You can continue the video as soon as you are finished. A tennis ball has a diameter, find the surface area. So don't forget, this is number two. So to find the radius, I'm just going to take the diameter, and I will divide it by two which is going to give me 6.8 divided by 2, and that's going to be 3.4 centimeter. Okay, and then I'm going to go on. So I start now the surface area. And that is going to be now that 4 pi r squared. And now, so find its uh, surface area. So I'm just going to substitute. That's 4, oh, oh, 4, and then that's the pi. And then it's going to give me that 3.4 square. And if I press everything, I will get to three significant figure, 1, 4, 5, centimeter square because it's in area. Okay, let's look at another example. A hemisphere, a hemi, I always remember it's half. It's almost like a tennis ball cut into half. Has a curved surface area of 364.5 pi centimeter square. Find its radius. Now again, don't forget that it's half. So that's why the half is jumping in there. There I put it, and then I'm just going to make R the subject of the formula, take the square root, and I will get 13.5 centimeters. Okay, let's look at an example. A 
This, the formula is a bit more difficult, but it's actually a lot of just substitute. It's just square and cube, but you're just going to substitute. Okay. Um, I want still the hemisphere, because that you remember that's half of, say, a tennis ball. A hemisphere has a curved surface area of 200. Find its radius. So, I can start by saying hemisphere and that's a half and what is the formula? The formula is 4 pi r square. Okay, but now they tell you what is it going to be. I'm just going to use white rather. So it's 200 and that's half and I just substitute. And what is the, I'm looking for the radius. I don't think it's necessary to put a bracket there. So basically, I'm just going to divide by a half. Okay, I don't think it's necessary to say. A half times four, so I just divide two pi, and I divide by two pi. Because a half of four will be two. And then I'm just going to take the square root. Because it's square, square root and it's and I just press on my calculator and then my final answer of R will be 5.64 centimeter okay and that's how you do it in the next video we are going to look at pyramids